What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Tuesday. It has been a wild week in the world of Philadelphia. The Jalen Hurts injury was crazy yesterday, and I broke it all down live. I wanted to jump on and give you guys an hour of just trying to figure out left shoulder, right shoulder, how bad is the sprain. We have a lot more updates to go ahead and get through today, including Nick Sirianni speaking to the media, speaking to 94.1 WIP today, to tell you kind of where we're at in the situation, the expectation for who will start on Saturday. Because again, as of right now, early on a Tuesday morning, they have not ruled out Jalen Hurts for Saturday, although as I'll show, it's probably unlikely he's going to go ahead and play. So update on Hurts first, then we'll get into um, Brandon Graham's comments on the play calling, and there's an interesting look at the NFC playoff picture, as well as Dallas Goddard being activated today. A lot to go ahead and jump into. Thumbs up. Let's jump in. Okay, so first off, NFL.com has the write-up here. Here is what uh, Nick Sirianni told 94.1 WIP this morning. Quote, Joining 94.1 WIP this morning, Coach Sirianni confirmed the quarterback's injury but didn't rule Hurts out this weekend and noted the club doesn't believe it's a long-term issue. Quote, he sprained his shoulder. He is attacking rehab. We'll see what happens this week. Not something we deem long-term. Now, he would go on to say when asked about Gardner Minshew, quote, he's ready to roll when his number is called. If he has to go, we have 100% confidence in him. He can ball and Quote. So that's interesting, right? I mean, that's big, way different than what we heard yesterday in terms of, oh, you know, it's a shoulder sprain, which he confirmed, but two weeks, three weeks, could he miss the rest of the regular season? That's not been determined yet, at least externally from an Eagle, you know, PR point of view. Now, internally, they could already have decided uh, Gardner Mitchell is going to start, which I think they probably have, but they also could have already decided he's not going to play, you know, Hurts is not going to play until the Saints game or until the Giants game or until the playoff game, but at least externally, they are still keeping it open with the chance that Jalen Hurts can go ahead and play. Now, again, I don't think he, that he's is, go, excuse me, is going to play it's a really good update from an orthopedic surgeon we're going to take a look at here that joined 94.1 WIP and kind of gave a full update on what he thinks the uh, shoulder surgery looks like or shoulder injury looks like. I think the main thought process here is that they're not going to tell you Jalen Hurts is out until the last moment just to make sure Dallas and uh, Dan Quinn, the, the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, has to at least think about preparing for Jalen Hurts. Might give Gardner Minshew a little bit of an edge in that game. Here was that uh, doctor, I believe it's Dr. Green, who joined the morning show at 94 WIP earlier today when asked about the situation, quote, sprained shoulder can mean a bunch of things. But after looking at the hit that Jalen suffered, it typically means that he has a sprained or injured one of the ligaments that kind of holds the acrimonium to the clavicle. I said that wrong. Sorry, I'm not a doctor. So that's the joint at the end of the shoulder. That's that when you land on it, that's what he injured most likely. The fact that he got to play the whole rest of the game, we didn't even know he was injured. Even in the immediate post-game interviews, he's going to be resting. He's going to be icing the shoulder. He's going to be taking a lot of ibuprofen and letting it heal up for the playoffs. Typically, for one, uh, for type one or two injuries, you're looking at anywhere between two to five weeks for full recovery. End quote. So again, I think the fact they haven't officially announced Jalen Hurts as the not starting on Saturday is not anything to read into. He's not going to play. There's a lot of people saying, oh, he's tough. You know, he wants to beat the Dallas Cowboys. He is, 100%. But this needs to be a long-term thing. It's not beat the Dallas Cowboys season. It's win a Super Bowl season. And so I am 100% behind Gardner Minshew starting on Sunday, or sorry, on Saturday. And I think Gardner Minshew can start the next couple of games. All you got to do is win one, and Philadelphia then locks the one seed down and wins the NFC East. The two big goals that every single team has going into their year is one, win the division, and two, try to get the number one overall seed. And I think Minshew can go ahead and do that don't rush Hertz back. He doesn't need to, you know, play to prove how tough he is. Doesn't need to play to, you know, secure the NFL MVP. He needs to play when he's healthy. That way they can win a Super Bowl. LH Shore Parks has a good tw uh, uh, tweet here before we go ahead and move on to other topics. And showing you the last five games, the Eagles have started a backup quarterback and tried to win the game because you go back to last year when Minshew played against the Cowboys. They weren't really trying to win. They had already locked up a playoff spot. But Minshew beat the Jets in 2021. Hurts beat the Saints in 2020. Remember, that's kind of a big breakout game there for Jalen Hurts. Foles beat the Falcons. Foles beat the Rams. Foles beat the Giants. These are, again, backup quarterbacks coming in. You don't actually put you know Nick Foles as a backup quarterback when he started against, say, the Falcons in that wildcard round game. But... A good look here that, you know, backup quarterbacks for Philadelphia. It's kind of been their M.O., and that's why I feel very confident in Gardner Minshew going forward. I'm so confident that I think you guys should jump in on this betting promo that I have here with our friends at DraftKings. You bet $5 on Gardner Minshew and the Eagles to win on Saturday. If they do, you get 150 back in free bets. The link is down below in the description box. Come on, put your money where your mouth is. You feel good about Gardner Minshew? I feel good about Gardner Minshew. Jump in here. All you got to do is click the little sign-up button you see right there. 
Deposit five plus dollars, place a five plus dollar money line bet on the Eagles next game, and get back one fifty if the Eagles win. If you're just now signing up with our friends at DraftKings, again, link down below. Jump in right here. Now, the question really becomes, do you blame somebody for this injury? I saw a lot of comments on my live show yesterday while this was all unfolding saying, this is Shane Steichen's fault. This is Nick Sirianni's fault. The play calling is bad. Why is Jalen Hurts running the football 17 times on Sunday against the Bears, whereas Miles Sanders, a running back, only ran the ball 11 times? And these are very valued questions. And I thought it was fascinating that Brandon Graham was on 94.1 WIP again this morning and was asked this exact question. I think his answer is good uh, and one we all should follow. Quote, you know what? I'm going to let Coach do what he's going to do. We've been winning. I understand you're not going to like everything, but they see certain things, and the game plan is the game plan until you have to adjust at halftime. I felt like as the game went on, we adjusted. I know how it is in Philly. People want us to run the ball, but I know I trust the coaches. Whatever has been working, I'm not going to question it now. End quote. Now, I agree to a point. I think that the people who are arguing that Steichen's to blame and the people who are arguing not Steichen to blame both have a, you know, uh, kind of a, a, a fair point here. And BG's right. You know, the coaches aren't trying to get Jalen Hurts hurt. They're trying to win football games. And Jalen Hurts running 17 times was just enough to go ahead and win the football game. However, you can be a little bit more balanced. You can't protect him a little bit more. And it's not like the Eagles have a poor running game. It's not like... Miles Sanders is having a bad year where he has no rushing touchdowns like he did last year. He's having an incredible year. You could argue maybe even a Pro Bowl year. 1,000-yard back, 10-plus touchdowns. The guy is absolutely balling out. And so, well, I'm not going to sit back and say, Shane Steichen, he's to blame for this. this is unbelievable. No, I'm going to sit back and say, hey, Shane, listen. You've done great this year. We're 13-1. and one. You have one of the best rushing attacks. You have one of the best passing attacks. You have the NFL MVP as your quarterback. So clearly, you're doing something right. You know more than me. It would be nice, though, especially going forward, if you run the ball a little bit less with Jalen Hurts and a little bit more with Miles Sanders. If you guys agree, give the show a thumbs up. Also, a lot of new subscribers from the past couple of days. I appreciate you guys trying to get to Philadelphia Eagles and also a lot of NFL stuff at the end of every single show, so stay tuned for that. All right, final eagle note here. Uh, Elliot, again, has the update via Twitter. They have officially activated Dallas Goddard, the 53-man roster. As you see here, he had a huge game last year in the game where Hertz was in at quarterback. This is great news, and this is not really a surprise. When they didn't activate him last Saturday, as I predicted they would, I was wrong on that one, that kind of guaranteed he would be activated for this Saturday against the Dallas Cowboys. It's just another weapon, another comfort blanket to go ahead and give to Gardner Minshew if, in fact, he is the starter as, you know, tight ends are the quarterback's best friend, and Minshew and uh, Dallas Goddard have had a lot of connections, at least in the past, whenever they uh, have been together, especially in that Jets win. That was like, you know, late last year when Hurts was out for that one game. So good news there. Goddard's activated. Uh, that's going to get kind of washed away in all the Jalen Hurts drama this week. But that is uh, good injury news in a week of bad injury news. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up here. We're taking a look at the playoff picture. We had a game last night, and it does matter with the Packers. We'll look at the NFC and the AFC as a whole, and then look at kind of these fringe football teams going forward. I want to focus in on the NFC first, though, and show you these first-round matchups. This feels very kind of likely for these first-round matchups, but what's fascinating to me is what Giants team and what Commanders team are you going to get in that first round, right? These are two vulnerable football teams. Really, every single seed here, and in terms of division winners, not named Philadelphia, are vulnerable, right? The Vikings have showed you that they can get down 33 points, which is awful, but then they can come back from 33 points. What does their offense look like against a very, very good commander defense? Same thing goes for the 49ers. The Giants defense likes to blitz. They like to show you a lot of new looks and new schemes, and the 49ers are going to be running out a very young, very green seventh round draft pick quarterback in Brock Purdy, who I refuse to give full praise to while he's been impressive. I still think he can have some bad games in the postseason. And then this Bucks matchup. Tampa Bay is going to be heavy underdogs if they do play Dallas, and that's most likely your 4-5 matchup, but it will be in Tampa, and it will be Tom Brady against a football team he's never lost to. 6-0 and against the Dallas Cowboys. And listen, Tom and Tampa have nothing to lose in that game because they, again, will be heavy underdogs. And it's Tom Brady in the playoffs. This is going to be a fascinating matchup right here. Now, the question is, will these two teams, the Commanders and the Giants, be the final two wildcard teams? As you look at the NFC standings, there are really three football teams that are sitting right behind them. Seattle at 7-7, seven and seven, Detroit winners of six in a row, or what, six of their last seven, and then Green Bay. Technically, with Green Bay's win last night against a, you know, I mean, severely beat up uh, uh, Rams team, if the Packers win out, then they could be a seven seed, and that would make a fascinating 2-7 matchup or a fascinating 3-6 matchup. I think Detroit is the scariest wildcard team right now in the National Football League. I think that no team would want to face Detroit because Detroit, they're playing with house money. If they just make the playoffs, 
That is a massive win for a Lions franchise that has not done that since Matt Stafford was there. And that one time they went and lost to the, uh, what was it, the Cowboys, right, when they had Megatron? That was eons ago. You get them in the postseason, they're going foot on fourth down and four. They're doing fake punts. They're throwing the football all over the place. They have serious talent offensively, and that would be a nightmare matchup, I think, for any of these teams, Minnesota especially, San Francisco, and then, of course, you know, if they were to play Tampa, which is very unlikely, but you get my point. Green Bay is kind of the same way. Aaron Rodgers gets into the playoffs. He's Aaron Rodgers, right? He can light you up, and he has good receivers, and he, Christian Watson is starting to kind of come along, and you saw what a, uh, A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones were able to do last night. And So keep an eye on these two AFC North teams, sorry, NFC North teams who could sneak in here and actually be a big-time factor in what could be a fascinating wildcard round that as long as Philadelphia wins one of their final three games, they don't have to play in, which is, again, so huge. Just win. Just why oh, this whole idea of, like, resting starters, I get, but just wrap up the one seed first, then we'll worry about resting starters. So, all right, we'll keep it, you guys up to date on what's going on in terms of Philadelphia the rest of the week, even with the Christmas holiday. I'm on the road, uh, you know, but I'm still going to try to get you guys as many shows as possible. Really good interview I did a little bit earlier this morning with RJ, or sorry, yesterday morning with RJ Ochoa. He's the managing editor of BloggingTheBoys.com, one of the biggest cowboy beat writers out there. Good friend of mine. I've hosted shows with him a long time ago uh, in my radio years. He came on. We did a full breakdown of not only the NFC, but Eagles versus Cowboys. It did take place before the uh, Jalen Hurts injury, and so we don't talk about the Jalen Hurts injury, but it's a really, really good interview. We're going to go ahead and drop on the show tomorrow, so stay tuned for that one. Thumbs up, and be sure to to subscribe. Okay, I'm Thomas Mott. We'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, let's keep hoping Jalen Hurts just rests up, ices that shoulder, and gets ready to go for a deep playoff run.